So we are resuming after the short break. Well, people is still, I think, realizing that we are starting. Uh, so uh, the next presentation is uh, about the, the NVMe uh, 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 driver, the, the work that uh, Andreas has been doing for the past year, I think, uh, or more. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, he has, uh, well, he works at Samsung. He, uh, he's part of the core team uh, of the subsystem, the Rust subsystem. He, uh, he also teaches uh, Rust at Samsung. He's trying to uh, uh, increase the knowledge of Rust at Samsung and, and uh, spearhead that. And he also works on the, his, he has also sent to the main lead the NAT block driver. Uh, and yes, uh, I think uh, this is going to be a, another very interesting talk uh, with some results, I think. So whenever you want to start. Andres, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Miguel. Uh, so um, thanks for, uh, for being here uh, for my talk. And um, if you have any questions, uh, please interrupt uh, and raise them immediately, and then we can uh, service those questions, because I think I have probably uh, too much material, so there won't be any uh, time at the end. So just go ahead and do that, um, and we can have it a little bit interactive. Uh, this is uh, going to be like a, a little bit of a, a status update, and then uh, I have some, uh, some, uh, uh, yeah, some discussion points as well. So the uh, the the um, block layer Rust binding uh, Rust abstraction project is um, uh, the goal. With that is we want we want to allow uh, implementation of block device drivers in Rust. So Alice just covered why why doing so uh, at least for binder is a good idea. Um, that was heavily focused on. Uh, security and um, when, when I talk about uh, abstractions for block device drivers with people, the, one of the responses I get is it's not user facing and it's not as se se security critical as many other parts of the kernel. So, why would you start in that um, particular area? But r when we build code with Rust, we remove a lot of bugs. We prevent an entire class of bugs from happening. And that means we spend less time fixing these bugs. No matter if they're security critical or not, we might spend a lot of time hunting with race conditions. And uh, we hear a lot about maintainer uh, burnout. So that ties very well into that as well. The, the less uh, bugs we have, the less uh, time to review patches from maintainers. And so we also want to provide reference implementations for um, if you want to go about and, and build a, a block device driver in Rust, how do you do that? We want to provide some material you can look at to get an idea of how to do it. And we also want to provide the existing storage community with, um, with something to, to look at. So by, by implementing stuff that uh, the community is, is very familiar with, uh, they have some starting point for the Rust stuff. Because one of the uh, one of the blockers for having Rust in a lot of places in the kernel is we need the maintainers to be able to review the stuff that they have in the subsystem, and so by by providing these reference implementations, we can uh, help further that. And of course, we want to remove risk for early adopters. If someone wants to build a block device for in Rust. Uh, they don't uh, have to be the first ones to do it. We show that uh, we have a lot of infrastructure to do it and they can just go ahead. So the uh, block layer uh, abstractions are in four parts. We have the actual uh, abstractions, we have an NVMe driver, we have a null block driver, and we have a, a ton of dependencies for accessing various parts of the kernel that we need. The all of the patches are rebased uh, one or two times per kernel release, and you can find them. I put a link uh, and some branch names. So they will be available as a kernel uh, is released. This is a list of the dependencies, uh, the Rust abstractions that the NVMe driver needs to function. There is an, so we have like a device abstractions, bus abstractions, IRQ, PCI, IO memory, all of that stuff. Uh, the reason I have this list, uh, it, there's a couple of reasons. Um, 
One is to say, like when you when you build a driver in Rust, you don't actually just build the driver because all of the infrastructure you need to build the drivers is missing. So you have to put that up as well. And um, so I know that um, uh, I, I know that uh, uh, some other people are also b building drivers that depend on the same um, abstractions. And we each have like our own uh, copy of these and we each maintain them on our own. I have it on my to-do list to reach out to people to um, uh, to sort of see if we can uh, crowdsource some of this maintenance, have a, a common tree somewhere. Uh, I didn't uh, get to that yet, but if you're sitting here with uh, an idea to build something that, that uh, relies on some of this, maybe we can uh, share the load of rebasing this. And uh, also to let you know that this exists and is rebased on top of latest re Linux uh, as it's released. So if you if you are well, thinking about starting a project, but you're gonna you're like ah I don't know because maybe PCI is not available in Rust, it is available at some place. And um, yes. So there was a question: Is this uh, intended to replace the current NVMe upstream? This uh, NVMe driver is a reference implementation. Uh, it only covers uh, PCI transport, so it doesn't cover um, uh, like data center uses. It, it would only work for like your laptop or your local workstation. And in, in, in regards to whether it can be upstreamed or not, I have received a very clear uh, knock on that. <laughs> so, um, so that's a no, <laughs> uh, and of, of, of course, um, I don't agree with the storage community on that, but like, it's not my decision and they have uh, valid reasons for not wanting this upstream. Uh, Andres, uh, one question from the chat. Uh, Benjamin uh, says, not sure I understand the scope. Yeah, Is I, this I just addressed yeah, that, sorry. I think, uh, uh, let me know if I didn't. Ah, you, you see it there, the chat? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so, even though that, even though this particular driver is not currently looking like it's going to be upstream, all of these abstractions and all of the work I do in rebasing them, uh, they they have uh, uh, um, validity in the sense that Rust is coming to the kernel, and I cannot imagine a future where we're never going to access PCI uh, from Rust. And so, therefore, uh, this is not wasted work. Like we're still going to use all of these uh, abstractions in somehow. Maybe not from this NVMe driver, but you may, there's many drivers you can write. And um, yeah, I think, yeah, Christian. Just you said you got a knack. Was that like a, only when there's a user will take this or does? The, uh, so the storage uh, community does not want this particular NVMe driver in the tree. Okay. okay, but once once there are, it wasn't like the PCI layer said no. No, no, no. Okay. I, I did not uh, talk to to PCI maintainer or for for the for for the matter of fact any of the maintainers of any of these subsystems. Okay. But like uh, they're not going uh, they're not going in unless there's a user. It would be dead code, right? Yeah. So, yeah. But uh, I'm keeping I'm keeping it alive in my uh, tree. Uh, all right. So we also have, uh, I have the null block driver and uh, that has a, a brighter future uh, upstream. Um, and th there was no knock for that, at least not uh, for all of the community. So that's more like of a, more like a maybe. And let's uh, reevaluate uh, in the near future. And for that, we have uh, Rad Radix tree abstractions and we have some timer support. Um, and uh, yeah, just for the, uh, just for uh, completeness, all, most of the the NVMe driver was written was originally written by Watson along with a lot of the abstractions. I've written the Nodblock driver and uh, uh, some of these Radix tree and timer abstractions. Uh, so they are available as well. Yeah, Andrea, there's a question. Uh, one question. Let's say I want to use one of these abstractions for my driver. Uh, mm -hmm. Would you recommend to like? pull them from your Git repository or, I don't know, have they applied to the Rust for Linux branch, developed branch or well, something? They are applied to my tree only, but they are rebased on top of the uh, latest uh, released Linux uh, tree. But so you don't rebase on top of the 
next uh, well, I do, next. Uh, I, now I haven't uh, I haven't done this rebasing process uh, for, for a long time but what I've ended up doing is rebasing on top of uh, kernel releases and then when Miguel sends a pull request up uh, after a while uh, he, uh, he he switched back the RC and then I rebase on top of that to be ready for the next yeah okay but, so I'm, I'm, I'm not committing to doing that all the time but I will commit to doing the ex the releases. Uh, usually, I do the other thing if there's like a patch I need, uh, so I'll, I'll get that. So, as I said, the um, NVMe driver is PCI transport only, and it's a, it's a good reference driver uh, for a block layer driver because it touches all of these uh, um, subsystems that we saw before. It's an actual real application. Um, and it's super important that I have that when I shape the block layer abstractions because I actually had uh, situations where working on, on null block, I did, some, uh, okay, I did something smart uh, to increase uh, ergonomics and safety of the, of the bindings. But then like in rebasing in, in the ME on top of those changes to sort of keep them in sync, I find that, okay, this stuff doesn't actually work for real hardware because of uh, the way callbacks work when you get an interrupt for hardware or something. Uh, and so doing the, uh, like dropping NVMe and just doing the node block, that's not like, that's not viable because we're going to get uh, abstractions that are not shaped correctly to handle real hardware. And uh, so I put the NVMe driver sort of in a maintenance mode while I, I focus on the node block uh, because of bandwidth issues uh, in my time, my work time. But uh, these are the benchmarks for the NVMe driver for the latest rebase. Um, what we have here is the blue one is uh, the C NVMe driver, the uh, green one is the Rust driver, and the dark green one is Rust with LCO enabled. And in order to, so this is in absolute numbers, iOS per second, yeah? Cross language LTO. Excuse me? Cross language LTO. Cross language LTO. It's, um, I have an issue that I can't boot the kernel with uh, LTO on my uh, real hardware, which is fine in QMU, but for real hardware, it doesn't boot. So uh, what I do is I only LTO the modules and I sort of hack the build system to only LTO the, uh, the uh, modules that I want because LTO breaks down for some modules that like crypto that has inline, or not inline, but assembly uh, files in it. Uh, so yeah, that's what it is. If you, I have the patches if you want that. I didn't put it out because it's not pretty. <laughs> yeah. I uh, reshaped these numbers uh, relative. So now we have a, a performance of C, performance of Rust driver minus performance of C driver divided by performance of uh, C driver. So relative uh, performance and uh, the error bars are 99% confidence intervals and this is uh, 30 uh, samples. Uh, so we have not too, uh, too much noise in the numbers. And um, so what we're seeing is that for a smaller Q depth, uh, the Rust driver performs up to 5 to 6% worse than the C driver. But for Q depth uh, 16, we actually perform like 1 or 2% better. And that's uh, statistically significant, uh, this uh, improvement. And um, so, I also have something going on here for a QDEP4 that I can't explain. <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't, I, I have no idea about what's going on here. So, but I, I want to look into that. If anyone has any pointers, uh, maybe, uh, you know, a speaker up or find me later. That's, uh, this is dark, dark magic is happening here. Yeah. So yeah, also because the change is significant and, and uh, permanent, it's, you know, it's not just like a fluke of the run or anything. See, yeah, switching over to the uh, null block driver. Uh, this is the current uh, list of implemented features. We have um, so only block MQ support, uh, direct completion, software queue completion, timer completion, and uh, read and write requests, no trims or discards, uh, memory bagging. And it's, it's really like a small kind of toy example in the sense that it's only uh, 210 lines. We just heard from Alice before who had. 5,000 lines, I believe, or something for binder. So this is like pretty small and concise, which is exactly the point because it's uh, it's supposed to be 
an easy read. So most most people should be able to take it and, and look at that. Um, we are looking into uh, being uh, uh, having uh, parity with the C version, and uh, there is an, uh, an amount of work in front of us. A lot of these features are like uh, just half day to implement, but some of them is significantly more because we need to bind to various interfaces in the kernel that are not covered yet. And um, as we heard earlier, when we do bindings, we, we need to make sure that, or abstractions, uh, we need to make sure that in no possible way can the user of these abstractions trigger some uh, undefined behavior. So we do have to think uh, twice when we do this. These are, so I'm sorry, the, the graph is a bit small. <laughs> um, I tried to make it as large as possible. Um, this is performance numbers for null block. It's a uh, file running uh, with, uh, on, uh, with the IOU ring. And we have the random read and random write. I believe read on top, write on bottom. And then we have uh, each graph is a, a, a different Q depth increasing to the right. And uh, each cluster of uh, three bars is uh, uh, one, two, and six uh, cores uh, submitting IOs to this uh, null block driver, memory backed and uh, direct completion. And so what we see here is um, sort of opposite of what we see in the NVMe driver, namely that for, so yeah, I, for I forgot to mention on the X axis, we have increasing uh, IO size. So um, larger IO submitted per request. Here we see that we have a very good performance um, on, um, on the smaller, uh, smaller block sizes, but as we go to larger uh, uh, IO size, we, the performance drops a bit. And, uh, but still we, the performance is within, um, I think when we're when we worse, we're within like uh, 2% and when we're better, we're within like, 10% better. So it's, uh, that's, I think that's fine. And these are like 40, 40 samples of each benchmark. So they should be uh, okay in regards to noise as well. So if you are interested in uh, contributing to this project, there's many opportunities, especially if you happen to be very familiar with the block layer, uh, I would appreciate any um, input uh, that you can give since like I, I, I started looking and reading the block layer code like a year ago or something. So I might be doing something that's uh, to some people obvious, uh, a bad idea and I, I won't be able to see it. So if you have that kind of knowledge, that's a great contribution and I would really appreciate that. Um, if you want to uh, help participate in, um, in uh, building some of these features for null block that, that we're missing, or even for NVMe, uh, just reach out and we'll coordinate and, uh, and uh, we'll figure something out so we don't step on each other's toes. Uh, and also all of the dependencies are um, something, they are something I lifted out of the old now deprecated Rust branch. And they are not, uh, all of them are not um, uh, thoroughly reviewed and um, verified to be sound. So if you have that kind of uh, inclination, you could also look at that, make sure, bring them up to date, make sure they are uh, of high quality. And um, if you share dependencies with the, uh, with the block layer bindings, please reach out and we can, uh, uh, we can uh, figure something out or maybe I will uh, hunt you down <laughs> if I get the time. I think, any questions, yeah? No, five, five minutes. Five minutes, okay. So um, <clears throat> I have the last part of my presentation is um, a demonstration of a timer API that I have put together uh, with a little bit of help uh, of Bukun and a lot of help from Alice's uh, work queue bindings. Uh, I basically lifted the patterns that Alice is using and applied them to something else. Um, so the purpose of this next se session is uh, to, for me to get feedback on this API and to make uh, spread awareness that it exists and uh, sort of tutorial like. Huh? So this is uh, going to be 
not the implementation of the API, but how it's used. So this, and the, the purpose of this is if you have a, uh, if you want to run a callback on a timer after some uh, period of time, you can use this. And that's what I use for the uh, uh, timer completion for the IOs. You define a timer by um, uh, embedding a timer structure in, into, a, into a place. Uh, in this case, we, we have uh, just some struct that has a flag and then it has our timer. And you can see we are using the uh, pin init API that uh, Benno was talking about earlier to initialize the structure. So uh, we have a macro that uh, allows the abstractions to go from a pointer to the timer into um, basically it's a uh, container off thing or go the other way. And um, the, the macro is implemented in, su in such a way that it cannot, uh, it's, it's always sound to, to use like this. If, if you don't have the right type at the right place, it won't compile. To implement a trait on your struct that, uh, that has the, uh, the timer embedded, and what you put on that is a run method, and that's going to be your callback when, um, when your timer expires. In this case, we're just going to um, print something and uh, set an atomic uh, a flag. And um, so to create the timer, uh, the, the struct that contains the timer, we're using the pin init macro to create an initializer function that allows us to uh, uh, initialize this struct in place. Looks like this, Put the, uh, we create a new timer structure and we create a new uh, atomic boolean. And uh, uh, to tie it all together, we, uh, we initialize the structure on the stack in place with the uh, stack pin in it. We um, grab a reference to our flag and then we schedule the timer uh, some amount of nanoseconds in the future and in this case, it's just a simple test. It's going to loop until uh, this uh, flag is set by the timer, and then the test will complete. Um, and uh, that's it. Yeah. So uh, the, you can find the timer abstraction and this example uh, as a uh, as a k-unit test, in fact, in my uh, node block branch. If you so, if you're interested in that. That's all I have. Any questions? So, no, this is uh, anything. Uh, I want to point out that the results uh, uh, are, I think, uh, very nice. The performance results are very nice so far. Uh, and some people last year were very impressed with them. And I think uh, you're doing a great job at, uh, let's say, uh, fighting a bit the, the, the uh, streaming. <laughs> you have a, quite a fight. So I, I, I appreciate that Andreas uh, uh, is, is keeping up the good work to, to, to make it happen, nevertheless. Yes, it's great work, Andrew. Uh, Andrew, so I, I have a, a small question. Uh, how much does the size change if you enable LTO? How much, how much is the code, the generated code size change if you enable LTO? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. I didn't check, but okay. uh, I will. Yeah. Okay. A good, good point. So um, when, you, when you enable the LTO, so one thing I didn't talk about is I also uh, have the the helper functions that we used to call uh, the C uh, methods, static static C methods and stuff. Um, I have a separate file for the NVMe driver uh, because otherwise these would be linked into the VM Linux image and then they won't be inlined. So if you have them in your own object, uh, Clang will be able to inline it to the right positions, uh, and I, that probably increases code size. I would I would guess, yeah. Yeah, okay. so it could could be like a cache uh, code side, well, like an um, instruction cache artifact. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Could be, yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.